Good morning everyone and happy Tuesday. I'm back with another live video on Facebook. So today I want to talk about the busy badge and I call it that because a lot of people wear it with pride. However, we see being busy as a status symbol. So if we're not busy and our days aren't packed all the time, we don't feel like we're providing value. And I think that's a really dangerous concept. So your success is entirely defined by what you think success is in your industry, personally, however you define it. But regardless of how much you're doing, you're still valuable as a person and your work is still valuable. Ultimately, it comes down to the quality of your work, not the quantity of your work. And I've read a lot of books about this in the last year and a half. And a lot of people can get by with working less hours, but providing more value or just as much as the people that work nine to five, five days a week. Oftentimes they can delegate a lot of things, automate a lot of processes so that they can work less hire people to be managers over certain things, and then they actually get to do the, their favorite part of the work rather than all of the work. But another issue that I have with the busy badge is that people are packing their schedules with little tiny to-dos and every spare minute that they have, they're doing something rather than taking the time to schedule in things to their day that actually matter to them. So whether that's, oh, I was so busy today, I didn't have time to help my kids with their homework. Or I was so busy today, I didn't have time to walk my dog. Or I didn't have time to make a nice healthy dinner. Instead, we ate, I don't know, freezer burritos or something. <laughs> but the idea is we're not taking the time to look after ourselves because we're so busy grinding to earn that busy badge that we're not actually considering the value of the things that we're doing. So a lot of people have, you know, a to-do list of things that they'll get to eventually. And it's anytime you have a spare minute, you immediately go and you start doing things on the list rather than what can I do right now to recharge myself or bring value to myself rather than everybody else? Because I find a lot of the people that I work with are also empaths and they have a hard time doing things for themselves rather than um, doing things for everybody else. When, <laughs> I wanna talk a little bit about to-do lists as well because I find this factors into it quite a bit. When you make a to-do list, based on all the books I've read, you're supposed to have no more than three items on the list, your top priority items. So and they should be ranked. If you finish the first one, reward yourself, and then do the second one. If you get those three things done, but nothing else, it was a good day. It was a productive day. But don't have a to-do list with 20 to 30 items on it and feel like crap if you only cross off four. Because yes, you can do all the little ones, but cumul cumul cumulatively, their value is less than the top three priority ones that you have. So for me, my uh, planner to-do list is split and it has work and personal. So I can tell if I'm doing perhaps too many work tasks rather than personal tasks and be able to balance it a little bit better that way. That's just a personal preference though. I want you to remember that your value comes from the impact that you have on others. Not necessarily how much money you make, that's not, to a lot of people that is the status symbol, but if you feel fulfilled with what you're doing, even if you're not making as much money as everybody else, then, and bringing value to others through your work, then you are a valuable human being. Take some time to pre-schedule in breaks. If you're uncomfortable with time to yourself, this will be good for you. 
it's a lot of practice to learn to spend time by yourself. So pre-schedule some time, say between 7.30 and 8 or 8.30, I'm going to not do any work. I'm going to read or watch a movie or listen to a podcast or whatever recharges you because usually the morning is for getting ready for work, taking care of the kids or the dog, and a lot of people don't have a mindful morning routine, and I'm going to talk about morning routines another time, but just make sure you're scheduling time in your day for yourself because if you're constantly busy from when you wake up to when you go to bed, you're going to be exhausted first of all, and you're not gonna look forward to getting up every morning. So for me, I tend to, depending on the season, I usually have Sundays to myself. So Sundays are when I do my weekly reflection. I plan for the next week. So I'm like, what are the big things I need to get done this week? If I get these, I don't know, four or five things done, one a day, then it'll be a good week. I guess I have all these little tasks, but if I get the big things done, then I know that I've, you know, been productive. Not necessarily busy, because sometimes I still have evenings off. Some weeks, if I'm working weekends, I'll take a Monday off instead and try and juggle it that way, but entirely depends on your type of work and how your schedule functions. But ultimately, if you're not filling your schedule, with things that make you happy, then what's the point? You're just running from task to task. You're basically a robot and that just isn't good for anybody. So before you assign your value as a person to how many things you can get done in a day, just stop and think about it. Because even having something like a, oh, what's it called? A reset day sometime in the week or once a month or something like that where you get to all those little to-dos that are nagging at you or things that have to get done or like big cleaning jobs or like I gotta wash the windows outside or something like that or do all these errands or make phone calls and book appointments. Put all of that on a reset day because then ultimately getting all those things off your plate do does feel good but to try and scatter them throughout the week and not take breaks instead is not quite good for your health. Mental and physical, because you do need breaks. So I'm not gonna talk about morning routines because I'm gonna talk about them later, but I find that scheduling in time for things like a 20 minute yoga practice, whether it's hardcore yoga or just gentle stretching, honestly, my body feels a lot better and I am notice a significant difference when I don't do it. My body starts craving all the stretching so take the time to schedule in things that work for you and remember that you're not a machine. That's the end of my Tuesday <laughs> rant. Um, if you have any thoughts about this, I'd love to hear because I know a lot of people run their own businesses or they have a, lot, they have a big family or things like that and I'd love to hear how you juggle it or assign your value because I think it's a really important topic that in today's society is just, you know, we have the Elon Musks of the world that work 70 to 90 hours a week. And, you know, you just have to, you are a person, you have value. That's regardless of what you do and what you bring to others. Okay, <laughs> have a fabulous rest of your week. And I will see you later on this week on Instagram for that live video, I believe it's about Kaya shampoo. So if you're curious about um, what I use for her shampoo, I do home make it. And I get a lot of compliments on her hair and people ask me what I use for her. It is on my website under the hygiene page, but if you're curious, I will probably be making a fresh batch this weekend. Have a fabulous rest of your week and I will see you at the end of the week.